How are you doing, sweetie? Okay. I'm still partially deformed. So You are not deformed. You look I okay. I am. It's actually, it's a lot better than it was, but it's not like, I'll see if I can. You see? And that's it's the screenshot like, I'm using this week. Right there. That's the screenshot. No, don't use that screenshot. <laughs> My stupid alien eye. Oh, well, it'll go away soon, right? I'm hoping so. It's a little better today than it was yesterday. It's like it's like when you get an infected cuticle in your fingernail, kind of only in your eye, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a little thing. You'll be fine. But you know, it just sucks for now. I know. Yeah, and I look gross, and and I work in a makeup store, so I'm like, I want to do makeup. <laughs> With no heat and you have with no heat and you have to keep the door open. Oh, my God. It was so cold today until like quarter to five. The guy finally came and fixed the heat. It yeah. was awful. you had to keep your door open to the store. That we have to keep the doors open all the time. <sighs> like even when it snows, the doors will be open. I don't know why. That's like our company thing. Well, maybe your company thing should be a visit from OSHA. Supposedly, if the uh, if the customers complain, we can shut the door. Here's what you do. You go in, you buy some nail polish and say it's cold in here. Yeah. You close the fucking door now. All right. So this a new hippo, though. Oh, my God, that thing is purple. Yeah. I put a picture up. We, I got him at the mall and I, but you know, I was with Tom. So I put a picture up of him on Twitter with the hippo just sitting there. He looked so miserable. He was very angry at me. <laughs> well, why did you do that to him? Because that's what I do. Mm. Well, of course, tonight we have some of the fallout from Halloween. Mm. And among other things. Yeah, I yeah, we got Halloween. I think we'll start with the Halloween fallout is probably the, the worst, best place to begin. So are we ready? I am so exhausted. Yes. I'm at that that punchy state where, you know, I don't know whether I'm actually asleep or not. Is this the real life? There's no such thing as sleep. Is this just fantasy? All right, here we go. Each week, Catherine goes out to the worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible stuff, brings it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And, um... Crazy. We're starting off this week in Florida because, of course, of course, I think they were they were feeling, you know, a little left out. They, they, they were feeling a little neglected. But, you know, what with it being Halloween, they had to find something to to bring to the table. And oh, my, did they? So there's always the pro the possibility when you're taking your child out trick or treating, you're go you're essentially taking them to a stranger's house. You check the candy. You make sure everything's okay and safe for them and whatnot. I think this was not one of those recommended safety lessons, however. And let's bring this over to the screen here. Man accused of flashing trick-or-treaters. Well, that's not a treat. <laughs> no. Not, you're not even supposed to give that out if it's not wrapped properly. Um, and the f Barbara Hijack, fuck you. The first line of this this story. Maybe this accused flasher thought the day was called Halloweeny. Oh, boo! After getting a report of a man opening his door and exposing himself to trick or treaters, a deputy was dispatched to the Deltona neighborhood to check out the situation. Deputy appeared through a window, according to the report, said that John Vowles, Vowles, really? 
63 was naked on a couch and then answered his door while wearing an open robe, which exposed his junk. Wait. Did a reporter a professional uh, news source just use the term junk? junk? Really? His junk? I. Why don't I have this job? I could do the same damn thing. I apparently professionalism is optional. You know, every like. There are some things you just don't do on Halloween. There are some things that are just bad Halloween etiquette. Every year you go out trick or treating and there'd be like the awesome houses that gave out like Reese's peanut butter cups or full size Snickers. Yes. And then there's always the fucking house that gives you the sugar daddy. Or what was it this year? That lady who gave out uh, the she waited for children who were a little overweight and she handed them a flyer on obesity. You might as well just hand kids a dozen eggs if you're that lady. Seriously. Dozen eggs, nothing. Set them up like a, a butane lighter and a fucking gas, a can of gasoline. Like just hand them a roll of toilet paper and point them at the tree in your front yard. There you go. Nah, just cut out the middle, man. Go ahead, kid. But in this case. Don't give out the sugar daddy. <laughs> Don't I, be that house that gives out the sugar daddy. Was he really that confident in himself? To think that this was a treat for everyone. I think he just didn't give a fuck. Like if he was <laughs> opening the door that way. <laughs> like it's not like he was actually flashing, apparently, from the sound of it. He was just sitting there with his junk. Hey, fuck you. Know, you. And it just, oh, whatever, here you go. What I want to know is was he actually giving out any candy? God, I hope not. That just yeah, it pants. Could be helpful in some situations. Just saying. Yeah. But hey, there was a guy who tried to bring in some sort of treats to uh, Montreal, and he did it in a very Halloween sort of way. They just weren't exactly the kind that, you know, you'd sell at a candy store. Maybe a very special candy store. Halloween themed drug bus suspected cocaine smuggled in pumpkins. Huh. Border agents found a spooky Halloween surprise Thursday in three pumpkins someone tried to smuggle through the Montreal airport. About four pounds of suspected cocaine. The pumpkins were hollowed out, filled with two kilograms of white powder in bags and recapped. Spokesman for the agency said the pumpkins seemed to be a little too heavy, so they were sent through an x-ray scanner. The Mounties were called in once the bags were discovered. Now, how do you do that without them noticing the pumpkins been carved open? I guess really, really carefully. Like, that's kind of impressive, actually. You OK, I, I, I understand the thinking here. The thing is, they'll never notice it's Halloween. It'll blend right. in. But, well, the question is, were they coming in from another country? Because if you're carrying produce. Yeah, they're going to they notice. Check it. No, no, like they're carrying it's, produce across international lines. They take that shit pretty serious. You can't just carry your jackdaw lanterns. No, no, it's Halloween. I'm allowed to have this. No, you're not. <laughs> and what 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 really is funny is I didn't I didn't know this. I thought it was the inside. I thought you eat the pumpkin pie it was made of the guts of the pumpkin. I didn't know this because I'd never cooked them. No, the pumpkin is actually boiled until it's mushy and it's the outside of the pumpkin. Ye. Really? Yeah. I didn't see you didn't know it either. No one either. So if I, what happened is here, you could have made the best pumpkin pie in the universe. That would have been something. A crackle lantern. I like that one. Man, I don't know what it is. Your pumpkin pie is addictive. Now we know why I'm eating it. Now we know why Linus was sitting out in that field all fucking night. That is the great pumpkin, Charlie Brown. Uh, but just did, Linus, did Linus have a sniffle? <laughs> Waiting for the great pumpkin. Uh, is that what they call it these days? No, I just it, come on. I understand you're trying to be. This is not an incident where you need to be clever. You're trying to be inconspicuous and fucking pumpkins is not inconspicuous. No, produce in an airport. 
How many times have you seen pumpkins in an airport? I have never seen a pumpkin in an airport in my entire life. I mean, granted, I've never traveled around. Well, that's not necessarily true. I went to Ireland last year in October. And I know it's not like they decorate with them. No, the I've never maybe a little cutout one, but I've never seen an actual fucking pumpkin in an airport. It's going to someone's going to go, hey, it's a fucking pumpkin. Yeah, that's going to raise an eyebrow or two. Don't do that shit. OK, well, the next one is um, it's kind of Halloweeny. I guess this is a I shouldn't say Halloweeny. God, fuck you, Barbara Hijack. Um, I guess this was kind of the uh, the trick side of trick or treat. Just kind of, you know, hardcore. Um, this is from Louisiana. Woman steals twice. Gets fired, throws a brick through window in nine hours. Covington police say a woman was caught stealing twice, fired and threw a brick through the window of her former place of employment in roughly a matter of nine hours. Wow. Police say Robin Camille, 26, stole a shirt from Columbia Street Mercantile. Officers found her a block away and she told them she left the store with the shirt in her purse and forgot to pay for it. She was arrested for shoplifting and released on a misdemeanor summons for city court. She then returned to her place of employment was questioned about where she had been. Police said she told her employer she had been arrested for shoplifting and she was fired and sent home. Well, I kind of understand that. About 11 p.m., Camille was caught on camera stealing two cash drawers from Walgreens. About an hour later at midnight, police say Camille threw a brick through the window of the tap room. Wow. Okay. This sort of, wow, that escalated quickly. Yeah. Um, like, you get arrested for shoplifting and then just, do 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 time to go to work. <laughs> I mean, I guess you're going to go to your job, but. but you ever but see that? when they ask where you were, oh, I got arrested for shoplifting. No. I would tell them something else. Tell them someone died. Yeah, make up something. That's not one of those. They'll let they'll understand. That's not yeah. like, you know, uh, they'll like, even I've, I've had bosses that will even understand. I got a ticket. They'll understand right. that. Or like, you know, oh, I had bad sushi and I've been puking all day. Yeah. Not shoplifting. No, you don't tell your employer that. Lady Bleach points out what was her end game? Yeah, what was the plan here? How do you steal whole cash drawers from the Walgreens? <laughs> That's that is just a whole bunch of don't give a fuck. Like not cash out of the drawer, cash drawer. The drawer, yeah. Just well, those no time. motherfuckers are heavy. <laughs> no time have to you, count it. Have you ever handled those things? No, I actually haven't. I, I've worked a few different jobs where you have to like move the till and count it, and those motherfuckers are heavy. That's not something you pick up and run with. So. Is she Superwoman? And if so, why isn't she using her powers for good? Yeah, what, what was her end game here? What? Because have you ever seen Falling Down? No. Oh, you should. It's uh, it's got Mike, Michael Douglas. Yeah. Yeah, Michael Douglas, basically starting off with little shit and then eventually losing his goddamn mind as the day goes on and progressing, kind of like this, only you know without the rocket launcher. It's the honesty that still gets me. Like, where have you been? I got arrested for shoplifting. Oh. Okay. Well, that sucks. Get back to work. That's never how it's going to go. Well, uh, this is actually, I guess this one qualifies as a trick. This, this was not... This was not... Well, I... This seemed like a good idea at the time, I'm sure. Standard Halloween trick or treat, trick or treat fair. It's like if you get stiffed, you throw rotten eggs at their house or you throw toilet paper in the in trees, you know, standard stuff. I have never I think this is a new one. Um, I've never stolen someone's llama before. Drunk youngsters steal a llama from a circus and take it for a ride in the tram. Oh, my 
my God, the poor Lamy was probably so scared. And Thursday morning in Bordeaux, uh, Bordeaux, France, they sneaked in. They snuck in, not sneaked. I guess well, it's a translation. Yeah. They snuck in and stole the furry animal from a circus. If you witness a llama, yes, a llama, getting on the tram on Thursday morning in Bordeaux, you don't need to worry. This is not necessarily a hallucination. It may have nothing to do with too much drinking that wonderful red wine the city is famous for. Thursday morning before dawn, five young that people. That was a long way to go for that joke. I know it was. That was a long walk to that joke. Uh, it was. It was. That was down the street, around the corner, came back. It was like, you know, the, that uh, family circus, where's Jeffy, the whole thing. Yeah, that was one of those. Yeah. On Thursday morning before dawn, five young people who had just left the disco um, went wandering up the street uh, where a Franco-Italian circus currently resides. Obviously very drunk, a crazy idea crossed their minds. And they noticed a cage which held several circus animals. <laughs> they entered the site, stole a llama named Serge, like the famous French crooner. The youngsters pulled on the rope around the animal's neck to make it walk out of his cage. On the same, well, they stole a lion, a plush lion, and a trombone. They then read parading the animal in the streets of Bordeaux, then got on the tram at the stop called uh, Bassin et Flou. I believe that's how it said. Uh, astonished by the sight of such an unusual group of passengers, the tram driver immediately warned the uh, the uh, Kelloy company in charge of the tram. I have never gone. I, I've been out to to uh, the uh, county fair here drunk before. I've done that. They have petting zoos. They have that you can ride the animal. I never went there and I went, I'm taking it home with me. And here's the other thing. The agents exited the Placid Llama and attached it to a lamppost. Because that's a llama's natural habitat, right? I'm assuming that was just for the time being. Yeah. And not that they just left the poor thing there. This poor llama had a very confusing night. <laughs> yeah, he, this is like, this is not what's supposed to happen in my life. Like he's minding his own business. And next thing you know, he's like the drunk train mascot. I, I've never, go, I've never said, I'm going to take this large animal and put it on mass transit. No, but you have said, I'm going to take the Olympic torch. And that was a fun idea. Okay, but I'll, I'll put it this way. The Olympic torch can't poop a pound of shit. Like, uh, yes, true. And the Olympic torch doesn't have feelings or a feeding schedule. Exactly. Or the ability for trauma. I mean, I don't think the llama was particularly traumatized, probably kind of confused. It doesn't seem that they hurt him, which is nice. But yeah, like, llama's can you really... imagine being this llama? Just like, this is not my day. <laughs> Where's Trudy with my fruit? Like, I guess, you know, given that it's our show, we can just be glad they just took it on a train. Yeah. That's... And a trombone. Like, you gotta, like... Imagine you're on the train, you're on the subway, and a bunch of drunks get on with a llama and a trombone. You have to wonder at what point your life literally became a bad joke. The channel is one. So if you traumatize the llama, would it be then be a drama llama? Maybe that's what the trombone was for. Dramatic music for the llama. Uh, OK, the the uh, the next one. We have two adults interacting with children in bad ways. Well, teens in this one, but still, this is this was not what the. F this one doesn't have anything to, do with, anything to do with Halloween. It's just awful. It's just awful. From South Africa. What the fuck were you thinking? Teacher fired after taking pe teens for penis piercings. Peter Oberholzer, 57, said the students at the Willow Ridge High School in Prestoria pressured him for months to get them a Prince Albert after they spotted his piercing in the shower. Uh, uh. Look at the second picture of this guy. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's got to be. What are you going to do? Yeah. <sighs> oh, 
The former head of drama at the Willow Ridge High School in Pretoria said the two 18-year-olds and one 15-year-olds walked in on him as he warmed up for a competition. Warming up for the swimming race, I had a shoulder injury, injury, so I went to the shower to warm up. Two of the boys wanted to check on me and walked in while I was drying my hair, and I immediately covered up. Said the teens, quote, hounded him for several months into helping them get a Prince Albert. Days later, realized his mistake. Days? Later? Days later, he realized his mistake. D- 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 days? You took a bunch of minors to get a large needle driven through their dick. Well, the 18-year-olds, but one of them was 15. The hell does a 15-year-old need with a Prince Albert? I know they're starting earlier these okay. days, but... What's anybody need with a Prince Albert? Let's I know! I, I, I have never understood, like... Like, I get decorative piercings and stuff. Like, I'm a square. I just have one hole in each ear. But I have never understood the drive to literally force a hot poker through your genitalia. I've certainly never understood why you would want to permanently have a metal rod through your dick. It just, it seems like we are really getting that bored as a species. Yeah. What's left to do? Shoot hot metal spikes through our junk. I don't, I don't, I have never understood that. I don't get it. I. But for fuck's sake, dude, a few days later, he realized this days later. A few days later. I agree a hundred percent. I should not have been involved, but I was trying to make sure they were safe. There's nothing. Okay. okay. I mean, you certainly don't want teenagers trying to give themselves one of those. Oh, fuck God, no. So, I I mean, I guess I see that argument that if they're going to do it anyway, you might as well make sure they don't chop off their own dick accidentally. But it's still not a good idea to go on the field trip to the piercing parlor. There's nothing sexual about a Prince Albert. It goes through your dick. Oh, God, I was right. The guys threatened to pierce themselves. You know what I would have said as as a teacher? Good luck with that. Why would that ever occur to you? You know what? I'll just I'll just drive a giant needle through my own dick if you're not going to take me. You know, it, it, this is this is why I am not worried about the longevity of my show, because there is a new generation being raised already. And the thing is, two of them were 18. They could have just gone them damn selves. Well, I don't know what the age of consent. I don't know what the what the age of adulthood is in South Africa. So I shouldn't say that. Maybe you have to be 21 or something. Yeah, yeah I just, They threaten to pierce them. You know, if a guy says, look. I'm going to shove a hot poker through my fucking dick. I'd be like, okay. That's well, <laughs> everybody needs a hobby, I guess. Okay. Have yeah. Fun, yeah. Uh, I wouldn't advise it. Okay. But, you know, sure. Free country. At least, at least sterilize everything first. Yeah. Our last one is the, is the, 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 the there's always the one person at the Halloween. There's always that one person who just fucks it all up for everybody. And this is that person. We thought I thought we'd seen the pinnacle of this with the grown people in that Trayvon Martin costume and George Zinneman. Oh, do I know what this is? I thought we'd seen the pinnacle. But no, I think that. Th- this is this tops it because this does not involve a grown ass person. Oh, so this is not what I think it is. Mother responds to controversy after son dresses as Klansman for Halloween. Halloween I is guess a- it's scary. Halloween is over, but the controversy surrounding a costume is continuing after the Crazeville boy dressed as a member of a clue. You know what? All right. I'm sorry. If I was a minority, I looked out the window. I'd be like, honey, honey. 
The clan's got little people now. <laughs> it's the tiniest clansmen. It's they got little people. That's like that's like a white supremacist children's book. <laughs> the, the tiniest clansmen. Ah, Craigsville, Virginia, Virginia. So this isn't even all that far south. OK, this is approaching civilization. Halloween is over, but the controversy surrounding a costume is continuing. Jessica Black, whose son dresses as a Klansman for Halloween, said the costume is seen as a family tradition. My brother has when he was in kindergarten and when he was 13. When Black's seven-year-old asked if he could also dress as a member of the white supremacist group, she made him a costume. It was cool, said Jason Black, when asked why he wore the controversial costume. No. No, it was not. It was not cool. His mom maintains there is nothing wrong with the costume or the Ku Klux Klan, which she says still exists in Craigsville. It's supposed to be white with white, black with black, man with woman, and all of that. That's like the worst Dr. Seuss poem ever. <laughs> oh, this is this is the best part. When asked when he learned about the costume, Jackson said he saw it in the movie Fried Green Tomatoes. Lady, oh. did you actually watch the movie? They're not the heroes. They're never the heroes. Find me a movie where the Klan are the good guys, where like you end up at the end of the movie being like, yeah, Ku Klux Klan, you really showed those bad guys. Never. There's no such movie. Birth of a Nation. I mean, ugh. and and that's it. like if they're Klan, I mean, the Klan does still exist. It's sad. Like I would say it wasn't too long ago. We did that story about the Klan handing out neighborhood watch flyers and they were doing that up here in Connecticut. Like it's just kind of sad, you know? No, but this, it, this is cool. sad. This is just look at him. I, I, I don't know. Just look at him. Look, his mom, lady. No, sorry, kid. You have very little chance in life. You, do, you are starting from behind the eight ball. Yeah, you do understand you are your whole thinking there. This is not going to catch on. Your shit's done with. You're making your child a target. When yeah. he's too young, seven years old is too young to make sociopolitical determinations. And here's the thing, clan people, I'm sorry to break this to you, but... The black people aren't going away. No, you're you're not no. winning. The black people and the and the gay people and the whatever else you're disliking these days aren't going anywhere. Nope. And so, like, you're just kind of making assholes of yourselves and making it harder for yourselves to interact in public because they're going to be everywhere you go. Yeah, you're good. You can't. It's it's done. It's a done deal. You lost. I thought we were going to do. I'm going to send you this link. Oh, no. I don't like the sound of that. There's always like we did the Trayvon Martin Halloween costume. There's always these fucking people who just don't get that. There are things you do not do. That is how a dumbass do. Yeah. There are just things that are not appropriate to be for Halloween. Let's have a look at this. So these are the homemade costumes. Oh, 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 no, no, no. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, fuck you. Yeah. What happens when you dress as a Boston Marathon victim and post it on Twitter? Alicia Ann Lynch, a 22-year-old from Michigan, tweeted at Instagram a photo of herself at work dressed as a Boston Marathon bombing victim for Halloween. Yeah. I don't know how this becomes a good idea. Now, I will say this, this story from BuzzFeed go, goes on to say how she got death threats, her family's been threatened, and that's ridiculous. That's terrible. That's fucking horrible. You don't do that to somebody. 
You know, like people hunted her down. Yeah. They found her family. Especially because she'd been dumb enough to put out a picture of her driver's license on the Internet. Yeah, which, I don't know why you would do that either. You but don't, You don't do that. But none of that is an excuse to threaten someone's family, to threaten like. Well, I, I still would say, well, in this case, there are no real victims here because the Internet you can say you shouldn't, but the Internet is really it's a howler monkey cage. Yeah. And if you go up to the howler monkey cage and start howling at them. They might howl a little bit back, but eventually they're going to start throwing shit at you. This is a given. And the sad part, like she released an apology and it just she still obviously doesn't get it because it opens with it seems as though my outfit was too soon and will always be that way. And it's like, I, to, no, it, this is not a matter of too soon. This is a matter of. Never. There are things. Okay. No. You don't understand. This is not a timing thing. This is a soul thing. Do you have one? Did you misplace it? Perhaps. No, and I don't even know, like. I can't even make sense of how that occurs to you and seems like a good idea. Mm. Like, I don't know how you go, you know what I'm going to be for Halloween? I'm going to be a murder victim. Yeah. I'm going to be the victim of this terrorist attack that people are still really sore about. <sighs> it's going to be hilarious. What? What? You know, no. I, if no, she it's was going to be hilarious, everybody's going to think you're an asshole. It's a bad idea. Like if she just, had a brain in her, be an asshole. If she had a brain in her head, I would think this is some kind of hipster thing. But it's not even an ironic kind of thing. I don't think she understands the irony or anything resembling irony or Alanis Morissette. I, none of that. Nothing resembling irony is involved here. She's just that dumb. Look, look, dumb people. And you had people that dressed up like the crew of that Asiana air airline crash. Mm. Like. If something terrible happens to people, that doesn't like, here's the difference. Okay. You can dress up in like a Victorian white dress and be kind of pale and put two little bite marks here. And that's okay. That's the kind of tragedy victim. It's okay to dress as because that's not re that hasn't that's really fiction. happened to somebody. There are no vampires. Right. Like that hasn't really happened to anybody that somebody you run into might know. Or at least the chances are really slim. Like I'm going to dress up as 9-11 firefighter covered in rubble. Not OK, Ooh. because that really happened to somebody. Look, dumb people. I know some of you are watching just statistically. Some of you are dumb. <laughs> it's it's it has to be nice. It's, it's, well, no, I'm not naming names. I'm just saying if you happen to be a dumb person watching. Hi. Don't taunt the Internet. No, do not taunt Happy Fun Ball. The Internet. Will it it won't just bite you. It will bite you, it will hump you, it will shit on you, it will bite you again, and then it will murder you. The internet will burn your life down for the slightest transgression. Leave it, leave it alone. You are not equipped to deal with this shit. You really aren't. Just maybe, but just like maybe, maybe just be a decent human being. And you won't have to worry about that. Like, yeah. maybe just be a decent human being and don't ridicule people that have horrible things happen to them. And you won't even have to worry about angering the Internet. Apparently, the Internet is isn't uh, uh, thinks thinks being decent is funny. Don't go near the Internet. Don't go near it. Just don't do it. So I, I guess that's the first thing we learned this week is we're this. on the Internet right now. Yeah, I know. This is dangerous right here. I I, I just, yeah. I think you, you, we that's the first thing we learned is 
Don't 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 go near the internet. It's scary in there. You know, they need like you know we we've got the, the rubber gloves and we've got the mask and fuck for fuck's sake we have condoms. We got to have something to keep that shit out of our brains. No. Got to be something. Nope. We learned and we learned this week that well when you lose consistently for several hundred years <sighs> take a hint. The march yeah. of, of progress is not marching. There's never been an occasion in Earth's history where shit's gone backwards. That's time doesn't work like that. Yeah, that's not coming back around. Not coming. It's not, you know, it's not like disco. It's not like, you know, the, the high shoes and the bell bottoms and the, the that's like fellow, fellow white people of the world. There's never going to be a water fountain that we exclusively use again. No, nope. And that's OK, because that was stupid. That was very stupid. You know, there's never going to be a law that we can't marry not white people again. And that's OK, because that was stupid. So don't. Just, you know, she might she might as well have just draped a T-bone around a kid's neck and kicked him into a lion cage. Can you imagine being like answering the door on Halloween and seeing that kid? Like. You're not going to. How not, do you react to that? Right. Like. Ah, like, like you're not going to not give a kid candy, uh, but what, like, how would you even react to that? Seven, all like, seven, trick or trick or years old, seven years old, uh, some mom dressed seven years old. I feel sorry for him, man. I know it's sad because he thinks it's cool. And it's like, no, it's not kid. Oh, someone show him what real cool is. Is. Not, not that, not that. Um, we've learned that even if they say they'll do it themselves, don't take kids who do not belong to you to have holes put in them, especially their penises. I don't know. I actually have to say this. I actually have to say, I'll, especially not the penis. Don't get holes put in You'd like to think that would go without saying. You would, but you'd be wrong. You'd like to think that you wouldn't have to tell somebody, hey, you know what? Don't take someone else's kid to get a needle driven through his dick. That's Don't. a bad idea. Do you, do, do, if, you, if you have no genetic material involved in this creature, do not allow it on your recognizance to put holes in itself. Nothing good's going to come of that shit. And maybe if they threaten to pierce their own dick... You call their parents. I mean, I'm, um, that's going to get a little awkward because you're a teacher and they're going to be like, you know, you're going to answer some awkward questions about the rod through your dick and how they came to know about it. But you haven't technically done anything wrong then. Like you were using the shower. They walked in on you. It's going to be a little awkward, but you haven't done anything wrong. I'm that's a, the preferable situation. I'm enough of an asshole to go, uh, well, guys, just uh, be sure to put it on YouTube. That's where the money is. And that's why you're not a teacher. That's why I'm not a teacher. We've learned that llamas. Don't work with the youth. We've heard don't put a llama on a train. Don't don't drink and steal farm animals. Leave the llama alone. Yeah, don't. I guess it's it's they were kind. At least they were kind to the llama. Yeah, he wasn't. He didn't seem mistreated. Just perhaps a little confused. That is a hell of a drinking buddy, though. He's like, you're my friend, Llama. You know me. You know my problems. I love you, Llama. It's you and me forever. And Llama's just like. Llama's <laughs> just like, all right. All right. He's so yeah. cool. Look, this, this is cool. Nothing gets to him. I love you, too, man. I love you, Llama. I love you, Llama. We've learned that, uh. You know, sometimes you can be too honest. Not often, but sometimes. I got to get commend her. You were honest about it. Yes, that was good. The 
brick through the window, the stealing the cash. You kind of lost your, your moral high ground there. In fact, you yeah. went up the moral high ground and then you fell down the other side and you cartwheeled all the way to the bottom. Yeah. You, you like, you like took an Olympic dive from the high ground into the ditch. <sighs> We've learned that no one brings pumpkins to an airport, so it's probably not a good way to smuggle things. When I was, when I was still in the world of online dating, this dude and I were chatting a little bit uh, back and forth. Wait, on the wait. Okay, Cupid. This comes from pumpkins in an airport. We go on this no. tangent. I'm. This comes from the fr- the one before it, and for you know, I guess you you Google people when you meet them on the internet. And he said, "Yeah, so you know, you're probably going to Google my name, so you should just know that that arrest is not what it looks like." <laughs> And I haven't yet Googled him, but I'm like, well, now I'm gonna. And he'd been arrested for throwing a brick through the window of a pizza place and like barricading himself inside or something. And I was like, okay, well, you're going to have to explain that to me now. And he's like, well, it's not what it does. You know, I used to work there. He's a keeper. Go on. Like that doesn't so much explain it. Like. Was it on fire? Did, did did you leave the oven on? And no, no, no. I, I, I you know, I have, I, 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 I used to have really bad drug problems, but I've been sober for three months, and you know, I was really, 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 really drunk, and I had to hide from the cops, and I had used to work there, and I'm like, yeah, you're right. That totally isn't what it looked like. It's much worse. And that's when we stopped talking. Good call. Good call. And then we went out and now we've been together almost a year and his name's Tom. Um, finally this week, we've learned if you are, in fact, going to be dealing with lots and lots of children on a certain day of the year. Pants! Children come to your house for candy. They're not coming for nuts. Step one, pants. Pants. I think that that's pretty much step one. How many things in life could that apply to? All of them. I pretty much, yeah, every, pretty much step one, pants. All that's, of the things. That's life. And, it, and it, that's, the whole, that is, I think we found the secret. Step one, pants. You've seen that book, The Secret? We know it. We, it just came to us. The secret is pants. pants. Step one, pants. I, I got, <laughs> you know, I can understand answering the door, trying to scare the kids. That's, that's okay. not with my dick. I'd be like, I you mean, know, are you trying to scare them by going when you're my age, this is what your dick will look like. Cause that's scary. I suppose if you're 10 and like a 70 year old dude answers the door. <laughs> That's going to traumatize some kids, I suppose. But I wouldn't go with it. I wouldn't lead with it. There's other ways to scare kids. I'm sad now. Tom, my, my actual boyfriend, said he walked around Halloween. All He works construction, so he was all dirty and filthy from work, and he welds, and he was covered in welding suds. So he said he was scaring kids by telling them he was dressed up as your future. 